and welcome viewers you're watching the brand new show of sunset tv connecting world parliaments on india's parliamentary diplomacy parliamentary diplomacy is an instrument of dialogue between parliaments which in recent years has increasingly engaged the attention of the world parliamentarians today have a greater interest and involvement in international relations they also have a global mindset on issues like food security climate change terrorism gender issues to name but a few in this program sunset tv will showcase how india is leveraging the power of parliamentary diplomacy to shape a more harmonious and peaceful world come along वासुदेव कुटुंबकम दैट इज वन अर्थ वन फैमिली इट इज अ कोर वैल्यू ऑफ इंडियन सिविलाइजेशन एज अ मदर ऑफ डेमोक्रेसी डेलिब्रेटिव एंड एडवाइजरी बॉडीज हैव वर्कड इन इंडिया सिंस टाइम इन मेमोरियल मेंबर्स ऑफ इंडियन पार्लियामेंट एंगेज एक्टिवली इन वेरियस डिप्लोमेटिक एक्टिविटीज दे हैव कॉन्ट्रीब्यूटेड to promoting global peace and prosperity by fostering dialogue and collaboration parliamentary diplomacy is no more restricted to conducting relations for interparliamentary cooperation this channel is also being used more and more by parliamentarians to increase mutual understanding between countries and to share best practices in the working of democratic institutions parliamentarians are uniquely positioned to influence government as well as the public opinion Indian Parliament plays important role in shaping India's bilateral and multilateral relations effectively. दुनिया की विभिन्न पार्लियामेंट्स के प्रतिनिधि के तौर पर आप जानते हैं कि पार्लियामेंट्स डिबेट और डेलीब्रेशंस का महत्वपूर्ण स्थान होती है। हमारे यहाँ हजारों वर्ष पहले भी डिबेट्स और डेलीब्रेशन के बहुत ही सटीक उदाहरण हैं हमारे करीब पांच हजार साल से भी पुराने ग्रंथों में हमारे वेदों में सभाओं और समितियों की बात कही गई है इनमें एक साथ आकर समाज के हित में सामूहिक निर्णय लिए जाते थे हमारे सबसे पुराने वेद ऋग्वेद में भी कहा गया है संगच्छम संवदध्वम सम मनासी जानताम यानी हम एक साथ चलें हम एक साथ बोले और हमारे मन एक हो लोकसभा स्पीकर ओम बिरला लेड एन इंडियन पार्लियामेंट्री डेलीगेशन टू द टेंथ ब्रिक्स पार्लियामेंट्री फोरम हेल्थ इन सेंट पीटर्सबर्ग रशिया from July 11th and July 12th 2024 the overall theme of the 10th BRICS parliamentary forum was the role of parliaments in strengthening multilateralism for equitable global development and security lok sabha speaker om birla also delivered speeches during the plenary sessions on two sub themes namely the BRICS parliamentary dimension prospects for strengthening interparliamentary cooperation and the role of parliaments in countering the fragmentation of multilateral trade system and overcoming threats related to consequences of global crisis Mauritius National Assembly speaker recently visited India here are the highlights
The visit emphasized bilateral cooperation between India and Mauritius in various fields, including parliamentary diplomacy, digitalization, and artificial intelligence. So first of all, we are very, very grateful for the welcome that we have received here. The, the, the hospitality has been uh, unparalleled and uh, we are grateful to the state of India for having organized such a high level visit uh, with the counterparts that I, we've met here, also with the uh, quality of the discussions that we've had of the program itself. So we're very grateful for having organized such high, uh, a high level visit in such short space of time. And this is yet another great testament of the special relationship that Mauritius has with India. Speaker of the National Assembly of Mauritius, Adrian Charles Dubul, called on Lok Sabha Speaker Om Birla at the Parliament House Complex. Speaker Om Birla congratulated Speaker Dubul on his appointment as the Speaker of National Assembly of Mauritius and was pleased that Dubul's first state visit as Speaker was to India noting this as a testament to the strong bilateral ties between the two nations. The Speaker of Mauritius National Assembly also called on Vice President of India and Chairman of Rajya Sabha, Jagdeep Dhankar, at Vice President's enclave and emphasized the long-standing bilateral relationship between the two countries. Their discussions highlighted the importance of continued parliamentary exchanges to further deepen ties between the two nations. The delegation led by Mauritian Speaker also attended a working session with Sunset TV on collaboration and expansion of Parliament TV of Mauritius. The Mauritian Speaker exclusively spoke to Sunset TV on a wide range of issues. We also uh, very, quite often uh, give the facts and counter misinformation which is otherwise there in the uh, social media. So when we put it out, uh, it's much more reliable and we have a certain amount of credibility that our audience um, uh, at least uh, recognizes that what we are putting out will be factual. Let's begin talking about your political journey, your personal life. What inspired you to get into the field of politics and how has been the journey from being member of the National Assembly of Mauritius to being the speaker of National Assembly of Mauritius? Well, first of all, politics defines uh, our future. What we do now will have an impact on uh, what will, will be our position tomorrow, how the country evolves. And I always wanted to take a, an active role, play my part in the future of the country. Um, so politics has always been also running deep in my vein. I've had the, the opportunity to be inspired by people who I look up to, who have shown me the way, the ways, of, in fact, of politics and uh, the importance of um, working for a better future, for a common future. And with uh, people such as my father, who I look up to, and my grandfather, who has always been a prominent political figure in Mar Mauritius, I've had this personal inspirational journey through them uh, to work for the betterment of the country. And I guess this has been the first uh, motivating factor to get into politics. It's a difficult step forward. There are a lot of unknowns. It's a harsh world. It is also a world that can be very lonely. And unless you have the support uh, 
of people who stand by your side and who are prepared to push you into your political journey. My political career has taken today another uh, dimension. In fact, it is a dimension that requires that I step aside uh, of politics, of the political uh, arena, and that I take on a role which requires impartiality, uh, reservation, and, and of course, to do the business that I have to do in the most uh, fair manner to all. So that is something that uh, is new for me because I have been in the last 10 years of my active political career, uh, a very engaged member of my former party, which I had to obviously um, step aside since becoming Speaker of the National Assembly. So it has required a different kind of uh, discipline now and, and a, a, a mental discipline to uh, be able to put aside uh, political uh, differences and to look at uh, the priority that is being the National Assembly, making sure that the business in con is conducted in the interest of democracy, in fervorance and the strengthening of our democratic uh, 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 infrastructure, of our democratic uh, institution that is Parliament. India has been among the largest trading partners of Mauritius. For the financial year 2022-23, Indian exports to Mauritius stood at $462.69 million. Meanwhile, Mauritian exports to India stood at $91.50 million and total trade amounted to $554.19 million. Trade has grown by 132% in the last 17 years. From $206.76 million in 2005-2006 to $554.19 million in 2022-23. Petroleum products have been the largest export item for India between 2007 to 2019. Other Indian exports to Mauritius include pharmaceuticals, cereals, cotton, shrimps, prawns and bovine meat. Main Mauritian exports to India are vanilla, medical devices, needles, aluminum alloys, scrap paper, refined copper, cotton shirts. Cumulative FDI worth $161 billion came from Mauritius to India in the last two decades from 2000 to 2022, thanks largely to the Double Taxation Avoidance Convention. In Mauritius, Indian companies have invested over $200 million in the last five years. Indo-Mauritian relations are mutually beneficial. Our interests intersect. Our cooperation is comprehensive in nature and extensive in scope. It includes political understanding of each other's interests, a strong trade, economic and financial interaction, strategic cooperation in the field of defense and security, energy-related cooperation, exchanges in the fields of education, science and technology, and culture, among others. Relations between India and Mauritius are long-standing, based on a shared civilization heritage and common kinship and culture. These relations are categorized as unique and special. They have also been called sacred and umbilical. A key facet of the growing India Mauritius relations is that nearly 70% of the 1.2 million population of the African nation consists of Indian origin people, which has helped foster strong cultural relations between the two countries. Speaker of the National Assembly of the United Republic of Tanzania and President of Inter-Parliamentary Union, Dr. Tulia Aksin visited India recently. Catch the glimpses. <laughs> President of the Inter-Parliamentary Union or IPU and Speaker of the National Assembly of United Republic of Tanzania, Dr. Tulia Axon called on Lok Sabha Speaker Om Birla at the Parliament House Complex. Speaker Om Birla expressed hope that Dr. Axon's visit would further enhance bilateral relations between the two countries. Speaker Om Birla also emphasized that India and Tanzania share a long-standing and friendly relationship and hoped 
that Dr. Axon's visit would serve to strengthen these relations further. He also shared his thoughts on strengthening cooperation between Parliament of India and Inter-Parliamentary Union. He hoped that through IPU, we shall be able to make democratic institutions more meaningful in the world. Both the leaders reaffirmed commitment to cement parliamentary cooperation between India and Tanzania. President of the Inter-Parliamentary Union also called on Vice President of India and Chairman of Rajya Sabha, Jagdeep Dhankar. The IPU President also witnessed the proceedings of the Lok Sabha and the Rajya Sabha. I have great pleasure in welcoming Honorable Dr. Tuli Aksan, President of International Parliamentary Union, IPU. And Speaker of the National Assembly of Tanzania. She is on an official visit to India as our honored guest. On 1st of February 2022, the 12th Parliament of Tanzania elected her as Speaker of the National Assembly of United Republic of Tanzania. Dr. Axon has been elected as the 31st President of the IPU by IPU's Governing Council, its main decision-making body made up of parliamentarians from around the world. This is your first visit to India as IPU President. Yeah. You witnessed the proceedings of both Houses of Parliament, the Lok Sabha and the Rajya Sabha. You also witnessed the presentation of Union Budget. Mm -hmm. Tell us about your experience. Um, well, there is always a chance to learn, but I'm very happy to be here. And um, yesterday, like you rightly said, I, I witnessed uh, the Minister for Finance uh, presenting the Union Budget, and which is very uh, impressive in the sense that the priorities that have been set by the government, it was good to be part of the history that has been made because also it is a historic budget from my understanding because uh, it's giving more empowerment to women and I think uh, there's a lot of hope for the people who are you know, not economically capable at the moment being empowered by this budget that has just been read. But uh, this morning I also visited the uh, Raja uh, Sabha and it was interesting to see also the minister was there but today she wasn't reading her budget because um, I was informed it was tabled yesterday but she was there to see the reception of how uh, the upper house has received the budget and so I listened mostly to the speech that was given by the leader of opposition. It was interesting to see how there are similarities at the same time differences between our houses. IPU is an international organization of national parliaments. It was established in 1889 in Paris. The IPU is inching ever closer to universal membership with 180 member parliaments out of the 193 countries in the world. From huge nations like India and China and Indonesia to tiny states of Cobo Verde, San Marino and Polo, the members represent the overwhelming majority of the world's 8 billion people. A Japanese delegation led by the Speaker of Japan's House of Representatives visited India. Catch the highlights. A Japanese delegation led by Speaker of Japan's House of Representatives Fukushiro called on Lok Sabha Speaker Om Birla in Parliament House Complex. During the meeting, Speaker Om Birla highlighted India's commitment to women's empowerment and democratic progress, citing the passage of important bills, including the Nari Shakti Vandana Act, 
and the role of election commission in ensuring fair elections. Speaker Om Birla also stressed on the economic opportunities for Japanese investment in India, particularly under Prime Minister Narendra Modi's leadership. Speaker Om Birla said that due to the strong and transparent government in the country, there are huge possibilities for economic investment. He also suggested further collaboration between the two countries through parliamentary exchanges and digital technology. Japanese Speaker Fukushiro also congratulated Lok Sabha Speaker Om Birla on his re-election and expressed interest in deepening economic cooperation between the two countries, saying that Japanese companies are keen to invest in India. He also emphasized on increasing cooperation between the two sides in the field of technology, including information technology, semiconductors and artificial intelligence. He also stressed that the strategic relationship between the two democracies, underscoring the importance of cooperation between New Delhi and Tokyo for Asian peace and prosperity. Japanese parliamentary and business delegation, led by the Speaker of the House of Representatives of Japan, also called on Vice President of India and Chairman of Rajya Sabha, Jagdeep Dhankar. During the meeting, both sides underlined their commitment to further strengthen the special strategic and global partnership between India and Japan. The two sides discussed the means to enhance trade and investment and people-to-people -people linkages. India and Japan shared strategic and global partnership. Friendship between the two countries has a long history rooted in spiritual affinity and strong cultural and civilizational ties. Japan and India are partners in peace with a common interest in and complementary responsibility for promoting the security, stability and prosperity of Asia as well as in advancing international peace and equitable development. At the beginning of the 21st century, Japan and India resolved to take their bilateral relationship to a qualitatively new level. The dynamic growth of this relationship is reflected in the number of high-level ministerial and parliamentary exchanges that have been taking place at regular intervals. There is a parallel process of business and industry in both countries taking note of the opportunities which has led to a sharp increase in exchange of business delegation. Let's take a look at India's relations with Japan. Defence ties India-Japan Defence and Security Partnership has evolved over the years from bilateral and multilateral exercises including Dharma Garjan and Malabar respectively and welcoming the participation of Japan for the first time in exercise Milan. Price service exchanges between Japan and India have been institutionalized, completing the triad. Coast Guards have had annual exchanges. Japan and India Vision 2025 Special Strategic and Global Partnership Working Together for Peace and Prosperity of the Indo-Pacific Region and the World In recent years, the economic relationship between Japan and India has steadily expanded and deepened. The volume of trade between the two countries has increased. Japan was the 12th largest trading partner for India in 2020. Also, direct investment from Japan to India has increased and Japan was the fourth largest investor in India in financial year 2020. Healthcare In view of the similarities and synergies between goals and objectives of India's Ayushman Bharat program and Japan's Arvind, both sides have been consulting each other. Investments and ODA India has been the largest recipient of Japanese official development assistance loan for the past decades. Delhi Metro is one of the most successful examples of Japanese cooperation. India's Western Dedicated Trade Corridor is funded by a soft loan provided by Japan International Cooperation Agency under special terms for economic partnership. Besides, Japan and India have committed to build a high-speed railways in India by introducing Japan system. India-Japan Nuclear Deal of 2016 will help India build the six nuclear reactors in southern India, increasing nuclear energy capacity tenfold by 2032. Well, viewers, that's all we have for you in this edition of Connecting World Parliaments. We will keep you updated on all the bilateral visits aimed at enhancing parliamentary diplomacy. With that, it's a wrap from my side. Goodbye and take care.
to watch more programs of Sunset TV subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to like and share them